great day. I'm doing another video on time. What about time? It's going to be a short video, but it's an introduction video about things that happen in advanced physics. Uh, the best way to learn something is to go to the best uh, theories that represent that what you want to learn. So I did that. That's called advanced physics, modern physics. There are different types. One has to do with space travel. It seems to click to my mind. I don't know why. But anyways, we have a problem in physics. What's that problem? The speed of light. Uh, originally, uh, relativity uh, was developed by Albert Einstein. The speed of light is constant, can't go faster. Uh, in my videos, in my mind, I guess, you can go faster than that. Some theories like Hubble uh, Universe, you can go faster than the speed of light. Uh, but it's not been connected to the books. Uh, there's no conformable, um, adaptable theory that says we absolutely can go faster than the speed of light. Well, uh, Albert Einstein created uh, what's called general relativity. Now, general relativity is a real look at space travel. His first book was Special Relativity, which was a imaginary uh, journey through space at the speed of light. How it would be if I could travel at the speed of light was his conscious thoughts. In that book. Later, that became general relativity. In his book, in his theory, we have the speed of light, 186,000 miles a second. His theories conform this speed limit, which they call C, and E equals MC squared, to conform that in an attraction gravity field, you can only go 93 miles, 93,000 miles a second, which is 50% the speed of light. And You can only go that fast, putting out uh, 186,000 miles a second of force, and you can only go 93,000 miles a second because you gain mass. It's, uh, you're, see, Einstein was good at explaining his philosophies. You gain mass as you travel, uh, try to go higher and higher. Uh, you, the energy uh, conforms and it gets greater so you so you can only go because of gravity uh, half the speed of light but here's the kicker he doesn't change the time sequence to the speed of light now the speed of light is the speed of light and things slower than the speed of light, which is M, whatever it is, it's weight, uh, conforming to that velocity, that's what E equals MC squared is, you gain a certain amount of mass due to uh, gravity. Actually, the formula is just the opposite. But uh, without going deep into it, uh, so anyways, we can only go 93,000 miles a second because of the attractive force, which is gravity. But he did nothing with the time. If if the mass increases during an acceleration through space or through a gravity field like Earth's gravity field. That's our example format. Uh, time has to change too. So you got, you don't have just 186,000 miles a second. You have 186,000 miles and you have a, a second. So 
if you can only go 93,000 miles an hour, I mean, a, a, a second, then you can't travel the speed of light in a second. It would take you two seconds because you're conforming to the gain of mass, which is 93,000 miles a second. And to reach the speed of light, you'd have to do it. For, you would slow down in that one equation of 93,000 miles a second to actually travel the 186,000 miles. It would take two seconds because it's you're gaining mass it's getting heavier everything is slowing down as you gain this mass and the way physics is written uh, e equal mc squared is supposed to make it veritable to all velocities and all masses and weights But to travel, uh, if you can only go 93,000 miles a second, you gain mass, time slows down as well. That means it's gonna take you two minutes, or two seconds, to travel at the speed of light. Not one second. So, the confirmation of Albert Einstein's idea on uh, whether you can travel up to the speed of life is broken down into masses. That's to say that can you travel at the speed of light uh, at 93,000 miles a second in two seconds, because that's what it would take. Then you have three seconds and four seconds and so, so on. But this is just a little introduction to the theory. What he didn't, what you do to one thing, you have to do to the other. So, for the equation to be complete, you'd have to travel uh, 93,000 miles for two seconds with enough force that it equals 186,000 miles a second. And to do that, it takes two seconds. My name is Rod Kowicki. Thank you. So let's, let's rethink what we just talked about. Relativity, Albert Einstein believed we could travel into the future or the past because time slows down. Uh, I believe that he might have made, made this, big, uh, this, this chronological uh, evaluation later on in his life uh, after he did uh, wrote, wrote his books. Because a mass slows down because it's accelerated through through a gravity force, an attracted force like we have here on Earth, and uh, the variables are the speed of light, and you can only travel at half the speed of light because of gravity. Everything slows down. But that's only each second of time it slows down relative to that velocity and that action, which is the action of nine, half light speed. That doesn't have to do with the world itself, the universe itself. The universe doesn't, well, when we die, the universe don't die. The universe lives on. We are just part of it right now. Uh, without going any f really deep into that, uh, 
I think this is where Einstein thought that since time slowed down like that, we're talking about a mass slowing down relative to a velocity. Now how that lingers into tra time travel, because time slows down relative to each second per second. He engaged his whole theory on the speed of light, which is a C. He promoted it as a constant. We know it's not a constant. Hubble theory. Uh, but even if it was, it's only uh, a, a description of uh, activity each second of time. If that's relative to the speed of light, and we, and according to Einstein, we can't go faster than the speed of light. To do so, according to Einstein, means we would travel into the infinite future or the infinite past. If you know that theory. Uh, that's a long time. We're talking about something that slows down relative to its equations in a, in a uh, attraction field. My other work is basically on repulse gravity, which is space supergravity. Supergravity has no attraction. It's a repulse force. It helps you, pushes you along. It says, whatever you can go, I'll make you go faster because I'm here. You got a river that's going 50 miles an hour, and you're on that river. You're going 50,000 50, miles, 50 miles an hour. Now you got an engine, and you click in that engine. Do you go faster than that? I think you do. Think about it. You're going 50,000 miles. You got an engine, and you hit that engine. I think you, you're going 75,000, I mean, 75 miles now. Because in space, you see, it's not like uh, on a river you feel things. See, you would think, well, you'd have to go 75,000 miles, 75 miles an hour, because the, the, uh, the river is going 50, and to go faster than that, it has to be put at a, a calm, and then you have to go faster than that to go 75,000 miles. This is what Einstein did with this train to make it 75 miles an hour. See? But in space, space is calm. Space is a pressure. It's already built up. It's already there. It's just going to help you along with your own footwork. In other words, you got an engine that goes uh, 50,000 miles an hour. You're gonna go 100, just because there's nothing holding you back. So whatever velocity you go, you're gonna go faster. Like I says, Einstein's train ain't all, all the uh, people think it is. It's complicated, very complicated, I hate to say. My name is Rod Kowicki. Check out my videos, man. I got a lot of them. But a lot of physics. If you want to understand. Of course, I understand this is a new theory. Uh, it's published. But it's not your schools. Or universities. It's an independent study. They should be in all your schools. My name is Rod Kowicki. This is NASA X. It followed from the special theory of relativity 
that mass and energy are both are but different manifestations of the same thing. A somewhat unfamiliar conception for the average mind. Furthermore, the equation E is equal mc square, in which energy is put equal to mass multiplied with the square of the velocity of light, showed that very small amount of mass may be converted into a very large amount of energy, and vice versa. The mass and energy were, in fact, equivalent, according to the formula mentioned above. This was demonstrated by Kokra and Walton in 1932 experimentally.